In this video, we're going to take another look at curvilinear motion. So that's just a formal way of saying motion in the plane. If you've watched the first video on curvilinear motion, then we're ready to try a harder example now. Okay, so in this example, an object's position is given by the following function y equals 50 minus 0.01 x squared um, let's say that x and y are measured in meters just so that we've got our units figured out here and we also have some information about the horizontal velocity of the object so velocity in the x direction is 3 meters per second, and that's going to be constant throughout the problem. So we understand the y-coordinate of the object's position, and we know something about the horizontal velocity. So with that information, we should be able to find the object's velocity. And let's do that after two seconds. Okay, for the purpose of our calculation here, let's round our values to two decimal places. All right, and we're ready to get started. So in a normal velocity problem, what we would do is try to figure out the velocity in the x direction and also try to figure out the velocity in the y direction. This problem is a little bit different than our first example because we're actually given the horizontal velocity right off the bat. So the rate of change of the x-coordinate with respect to time, that's 3 meters per second. So let's work on finding v sub y, the velocity in the y direction. Well, we're really looking at how quickly is our y-coordinate changing with respect to time. So we want to find dy by dt. Now, if we look back at our function y here, it's given in terms of x. So we actually need to use the chain rule here. dy by dt is the same thing as dy by dx times dx by dt. So that is an example of the chain rule. Um, really, you can think here of the dx's cancelling out. Um, that's one way to visualize the chain rule. So dy by dt is the same thing as dy by dx times dx by dt in this situation. Okay, so let's try this calculation then. dy by dx is just the derivative of our function y with respect to the variable x. So that's going to look like negative 0.02x. Okay, then we need to multiply by dx by dt. Now in this problem here, dx by dt, this guy represents the rate at which the x-coordinate is changing. So how fast is the x-coordinate changing with respect to time? That is the, identically the same thing as horizontal velocity. So that's just the definition of vx. Okay, so we can multiply by vx there and start to simplify this. Now we know that vx is equal to 3 throughout this problem, so we might as well say this guy here, he's 3, so negative 0.06x is what we've got here. So the problem now comes down to figuring out what x is equal to. Well, it might be helpful to think in terms of units over on the side here. X is measured in meters. So we could say meters is equal to meters per second times seconds. If we use a units approach, that's what we would get. Um, alternatively, we could translate this idea here into words and say distance is equal to speed times time, if we prefer to think of it that way. So either way, we're using this physical idea here, or the units, um, to set up an expression for x. So our horizontal position is equal to 
our speed, or we would say velocity, in the x direction times time. Now, there is a little bit of a catch here. Um, we actually need to add on whatever the initial position of our object is. If the question doesn't mention it, for example, in this question, there's no mention of the object's initial position, then we assume that the initial position is equal to zero. So let's say initial position equals zero unless otherwise specified. All right, so what that means is if there's no initial position mentioned, you don't need this plus zero term. You can just write distance equals speed times time. But if the question said something like the object is initially positioned one meter to the right of the origin um, or something to that effect, then you would add on your initial position measured in meters. Um, just put that in that position here in the expression. Okay, so in this problem, that's just a little bit of a detour. We didn't really need that, but now we've got the um, general approach if we need it. All right, so in our particular problem, x is equal to vx times t, and we know that vx is constant throughout this problem. So vx is equal to 3, and that means x equals 3t for this problem here. So now that that's nice and simplified, let's plug this into vy and we'll have a nice expression for vy. So going back over here, vy was equal to negative 0 0.06 times x. Okay, if we replace our x with a 3t, then we've got vy is equal to negative 0.18 times t. All right, so there's our expression for vy. Now, this particular problem is asking us to find the object's velocity after two seconds. So let's calculate at t equal two, what have we got? Well, we know vx is gonna be equal to three. That's constant throughout the problem. vy, if we plug in t equal two here, we get negative 0.36. Okay, so now with these two values, we can um, maybe draw a quick sketch of what our velocity vector looks like. So three units in the x direction and minus 0 0.1, 0 0.36 units in the y direction. So our velocity vector looks just very roughly like that. To finish off the problem, we're gonna need to find this, um, this vector's magnitude or its length as well as its direction. At this point, we found vx equals 3, vy equals negative 0.36, and let's start on finding the magnitude of the velocity vector. Okay, so in any of these velocity vector problems, um, we can think about the magnitude of the velocity as a square root of vx squared plus vy squared. So if we plug in these values here, we get the square root of 3 squared plus negative 0.36 all squared. Um, just watch your bracketing there, especially when there's a negative sign involved. And if we calculate this to two decimal places, we get about 3.02. So that, that magnitude there is measured in meters per second this represents the object's speed. All right, so anytime we're calculating the direction of the velocity vector, what we need to do is calculate arctan of, oops, of v sub y divided by v sub x. So we got a little recap of why we do this in the previous video. If you haven't watched the previous video on curvilinear motion, I really encourage you to go back um, and look at that video. And what we discussed in the previous video is that arctan can sometimes give us the wrong direction. That is because the types of angles that arctan can give us um, are a little bit limited. So to really have a complete formula here, we need to write on plus 180 degrees, question mark. 
um, sometimes arc 10 can give us the exact opposite direction that we're actually looking for. So let's try this calculation here. The direction of the velocity vector is going to be arc tan of negative 0.36. So velocity in our y direction divided by velocity in our x direction. And we may need to correct that. Uh, we may find that this direction here from the arc tan is actually the opposite of the one that we want. So grabbing our calculator, <clears throat> arc tan returns a value of negative 6.84 degrees. And we'll just draw a sketch here and see if we need to add 180 degrees to this or not. Important to draw a sketch when we're working with arc tan. Just want a very rough sketch of what our velocity vector v looks like. So let's say sketch the velocity vector. Velocity in the horizontal direction is 3. Velocity in the vertical direction, negative 0.36. So our velocity vector looks roughly something like that. Um, in this case, yes, the angle of negative 6.84 degrees, that looks absolutely correct. Certainly our velocity vector is not pointing in the opposite direction here. So it's really a question of is V looking like this or is V coming actually more like over here in this direction? No, it's not coming over here. We don't need to add 180 degrees. We're fine with just negative 6.84 degrees. So to give our final answer then, the object's velocity after two seconds is 3.02 meters per second. So that's our object speed at a direction of negative 6.84 degrees.